Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Maya 101 class for Thursday, June the 28th, 2012. In today's class, we're going to be putting together the scene for our little project. Now, up to this point, um, I mean, unless you crept into the Tuesday class, because, of course, this is a repeat of that class. Uh, if, you haven't, if you weren't there, then you haven't yet seen exactly what our project is going to entail. I actually have a preliminary render uh, of some R&D work uh, of that project, if you'd care to see it. Does anybody want to see that, or do you just want to be surprised? Uh, I'm looking over in BuzzNet to see who's actually interested in seeing it. There's a bunch of people want to see it. Paul says no, and I think Paul may be wrong. So uh, I think we're going to show it anyway. So let's see here. Uh, let's go ahead and open up Maya. Thank you, Wick. Very good, very good. So here's what we're going to be putting together. Uh, if I jump over here, here's my test scene. And I guess I can put away the render view. We don't really need that. So here's our scene, essentially. We've got a little tiny cherry character. In fact, I think I should be able to hit six... And I'm in high quality, so I can hit 7, too. And the cake looks a little funky, but, you know. And here's what we're going to have. There's this little guy. He's going to bounce and plop down in some whipped cream. Yeah, it does look like the cake kind of burned, doesn't it? There's a quick run-through of our animation. You'll notice there's several things kind of going on here. you got the little stem, which is wobbling around. Of course, there's some squash and stretch going on with the cherry itself while he bounces around. And I even... Yeah, where's the explosion? Well, you can put an explosion in fairly easily if you really, really, really wanted to. Uh, but uh, let's see here. Let me go to F-check real quick. And we don't really need to see the particle test right now. We can deal with that later. But we can check out the render test. And here's what everything looks like rendered out right now. So you see there's a little bit of motion blur going on. Of course, the table is a little reflective. Yeah, I know. Shadows in three directions in this case. It's just a prelim render. I didn't bother turning off shadows on some of my lights. Really, I think the the thing I worked on the most was getting the uh, the ice. No offense, but the cake doesn't look that tasty. You are the first person to say that, really. So anyway, that's what we're going to be working towards. Uh, as we uh, get through our project. So, uh, let's go ahead and close this out. And I'm going to, here's where I want everybody to start. Now, um, throughout the day, if you are going to be following along with me and doing each one of the clicks and whatnot that I am doing, I need you to make sure that over inside of BuzzNet that your status is currently set to participate. So make sure you click your participate button over inside of BuzzNet. While we work, I will be doing ready checks to see who is done with each and every portion that we're working on. Again, our goal today is to build out the various uh, objects we're going to be using in this scene. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do that for at least one of the objects. Uh, so, And you can decide which one you prefer, just uh, kind of academically walking you through different approaches to various problems in the, uh, the scene creation process. So, real quick, what I'm going to do is just kind of test everybody. I'm going to reset everybody's ready status, and I want you to all set your status to ready for me. And don't jump the gun like Wick did, because I can see that. All right. All but one, that's not too bad. All right, well, let's go ahead and everybody make sure you have fired up Maya. And I'm going to do a new scene. Whenever you are starting a new project in Maya, your very first step should always be to set up a project. It's absolutely critical. It's easy to overlook. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen folks who will get done with an entire project that they've done and everything is still in the default folder. 
I don't mind if you have stuff in the default folder, but really it should just be random things. Like maybe you just sit down and you're like, oh, I wonder if I can really quickly knock this out and you want to save it out for later. You know, throw little trash files in the default folder so you can wipe that out very often. But generally, you should have a project for everything important that you ever work on. So here's what we're going to do. We should go to File and go down to the Project Window. Then just simply click on the New button. Now this will give you a new project with, of course, the name New Project, and that doesn't help us very much, so we're going to delete that. And I'm going to call this Thursday Class. Uh, Thursday Maya 101, I think. You can call yours whatever you want. Did I type Thrust Day again? I did type Thrust Day again. Horrible about that. You wouldn't believe how often I've got to fix that when I'm making posts and whatnot. It's just embarrassing. So anyway, make sure you name your project something meaningful. Also take a look at its location. Now this is the default location for Maya installations, in my case because I'm using Windows uh, 7, 64-bit, which of course the bit doesn't have anything to do with it, but uh, it's under Users, Zach, Documents, Maya, and Projects. If you want it to be somewhere else, be sure you set that now. We're going to be using the remainder of the folders in their default state. Now, true story, we're not really going to need many of these other folders. Our uh, renders will end up in the Images folder, and we could store some textures over in the Source Images folder, and for the most part, that's about it. Our scenes, of course, will go in the Scenes folder. But really, we're not going to use most of these. However, just to keep things nice and simple, all I want you to do is to name your project and then just click Accept. As soon as you've done this, and this is just a good habit that I think everybody should get into, once you have your project set up, just go to File, New Scene one more time. It's kind of an old school thing, which may be a little superstition at this point, but it just makes sure that this particular scene is associated with your new project for when you hit Save. Incidentally, now would be a good time, even though you haven't really done anything yet, just to go to File, Save Scene, and I'm going to call this Cake Project Underscore One, and go ahead and hit Save. And because I'm also kind of a kind of picky about this sort of thing, I also think it's a good idea to make sure that under your save options, that incremental save is on. If it's not, uh, I would open that up, I would turn on incremental save, and then just go ahead and click save scene one more time. Now it's on in my case, so I don't need to save one more time. I just want to point that out. That way, along the way, you can just keep hitting Control S, and you'll get additional files in case you have to step back to an earlier iteration of a file. Do keep in mind, though, as you do this on bigger projects, this will start to eat up some hard drive space, so you may find yourself needing to go back in and wipe those out manually, or limit the number of incremental saves you have, and Maya will automatically wipe out really old ones. I don't do that because I'm a little paranoid, and I personally think that hard drive space is kind of cheap. Yeah, three terabytes should be just enough for incremental saves for this one project surreal. I think maybe if, if we do anything more complicated than a single bouncing character, you may want to upgrade to, you know, like a 12 terabyte backup station, just in case. Or two of them, and, and raid them, you know, them together, so you have 24 terabytes of storage for Maya. I think that'd be great. Okay, so... I think we are now ready to go ahead and begin building some things. Now, here's the trick, guys. I like a little bit of interaction here. We have three things in all that we need to build. One of Actually, we have four, but one doesn't count, so uh, I'll go ahead and write down the one that doesn't count. The table. This doesn't count, really, because it's just a plane, so I don't really care about that. We could build that last for all I care. Uh, but we have three other things. We have a cake, as you might have seen. Uh, we have a plate, and we have a cherry. So, what order should we build these in? What do you think? Who wants to see us build the cake first? All right, cake first. Okay, who wants to build the plate first? Okay, and who wants to build the cherry first? And that helped me not at all. I basically got the same number of things each time, except for Raven, who just kept saying piano over and over and over and over. All right, so I'll tell you what. I'm going to do it in the order that I want to do it, and I'll just, you know, I tried. I tried to get you guys to interact and work with me together, but I got nothing out of it, nothing for my money. So uh, I'll go ahead and build the plate first, because that's kind of an interesting exercise. And what we're going to do is build this plate in two different ways, mostly just for academic purposes, teach you a few things. We're going to build this uh, using polygons and show you some cool polygon modeling tools.
And then we're going to build it again using NURB surfaces. Now I did write that in all caps, not because it's a special word, but because it's actually an acronym that stands for Non-Uniform Rational East Blinds. So you'd think it'd just be NRB, but NURB sounds so much cooler. So we're going to build it in two different ways, just so you can see a couple of different approaches. You'll probably like one over the other, I'll warn you now, but at least you get to see some things. So let's go ahead and jump on into Maya and get started. We're going to begin by building our plate in polygons, as I mentioned. And what I'd like everybody to do is to make sure that, one, you're in the polygon menu set. You're going to do that by pressing F3. And you'll see that over here in the drop-down on the upper left-hand corner of the interface. Also, it'll be fairly helpful if you are in the polygon shelf as well. So if you take a look at the tabs along your shelf, make sure you click on polygons. That'll give you access to all of the primitives. Now that said, I practically never dig things out of the menus, and I do not often get to use my shelf. I just want you to have it up there in case you need it, uh, in case you're maybe not super savvy with the hotkeys at this stage, or maybe you're the kind of person who likes to dig things out of menus. That's fine with me. Uh, if you really like that shelf or you like the toolbar style approach, this is the shelf that you should probably have active. However, as we work, I'm going to show you some alternatives that have nothing to do with menus and shelves in the hopes of speeding you up if you like that sort of thing. But I'm not demanding that you do that sort of stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that your interface is set up properly before we begin. Also, now this is optional. This is just something I like. Uh, since we are not going to be animating, and because my screen space is fairly limited, I'm going to right-click over here on this little tiny gripper-style dot pattern, and I'm going to turn off the time slider. I'm also going to turn off the range slider. We don't need those. Now, if I am planning on doing any sort of mel commands, then I can use the mel line or the, the command line. I don't really see a need to do that, so I'll go ahead and turn that off just on my end. I don't think I'll ever need it. I can always turn it back on if I think I do. So that just opened up a lot of stuff for me. Now, generally, I would also turn off the shelf, but just in case some of you out there would like to use the shelf to click on stuff, or maybe I'll get a wild hair and I'll decide to use it too, I'll go ahead and leave it up for the time being. Now, let's begin by creating the basis for our plate. Now you can see the list of polygon primitives up here along the shelf. Which one do you think we would use to create a plate? Anybody just want to throw one out? A cone, a plane, a torus, a cylinder bends on something, or the artist formerly known as Ek. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to start off by creating a cylinder. Now you can do that by clicking on the cylinder button up here in the shelf. You can do that by going under create, polygon primitives, and choosing cylinder. I would like to give you a warning. Do not go to create NURBS primitive cylinder. That's a mistake. Make sure you're working with polygons. There's a third way to do it as well that I generally prefer. Whenever you hold down shift and the right mouse button, this gives you access to the polygon tools available inside of Maya. Again, that's shift and right mouse button. There's a little bit of a catch to this in that the marking menu that appears is fairly context sensitive. And here's what I mean. Right now, I have nothing selected. There's nothing in my view. So if I shift and right mouse, I get a list of things that I can create that have to do with polygons. So you'll see the cylinder, there's plane, cone, cube, etc., and so forth. You can even create your own just random polygon. I'm going to click on cylinder, and now I'm in the cylinder tool. Let's go ahead and get this created. Now to build this, I'm going to hold down the X key. And that's going to grid snap me. As a matter of fact, if you take a look up here at the top of the interface in the status line, each time I hold down X, you'll see grid snap get highlighted. Incidentally, the hotkeys for snapping are X for grid, C for curve, and V for vertices. Or point snapping, as it's often called. But anyway, I'm going to hold down X and put my mouse right here at the center of the grid and just drag out a ways. The actual distance you use is arbitrary as far as I'm concerned. I don't really care how big or small you make your plate. At some point in time, I might get a little more anal retentive in terms of how much uh, size I want you to give any given object. Right now, I think it's a little early. So just drag out something that looks fairly plate-like, and then drag up just a little bit of height. You don't need to give it very much. Now, the dimensions I wound up using as a, a result of that process were a radius of 8, and a height of about 0.6, which I could go ahead and just come over here to the channel box and just set that to 0.6 if I wanted to. And I'm doing all of that using the poly cylinder one input node. Now, in the last class, I told everybody that the input node is a lot like what type of object. 
I made a particular reference. Can anybody remember what that was? What is an input node like? Blueprints, very good. Chris662 uh, wins the uh, the cookie for that one. Yes, absolutely. They're like blueprints. So we can come into the polycylinder one node and we can make updates to the blueprints and thereby change our object. Now, it'd also be a good idea for us to go ahead and shade up our view just to make it a little easier to see what it is we're looking at. That's always very nice. Now, here's another part that I want to mention uh, that will make the creation of our plate a lot easier. I did notice in the last class that there were several students who forgot to do this and got a little bit frustrated and I had to dive into a whole lot of screen screens to clean this up. So I'm going to make a point to point that out so that people don't uh, overlook it this time. I want you to take your subdivisions caps and set that to 2. I'm just going to add an extra ring here on the top of the plate. Now, once you have this, you essentially have everything you need to go ahead and begin shaping out a plate. And we're going to do several different things to make this plate look a little bit more visually interesting than just a flat disc, obviously, because right now it's a fairly convincing, you know, slug for a vending machine, and that's about it. So what I want to do real quick, though, just to make sure everybody's keeping up, is I'm going to do a quick ready check to see who has made it to this point. Now here's how I like to do this. If you are done and ready to move on to the next thing, set your status to ready. If you are still working in any capacity, if you're still clicking and need any amount of time, click the one minute button and that just tells me that you're still actually following along. Whenever I do a ready check and your status does not update and it remains at not ready, I assume that you are no longer following along, that you've become distracted or maybe you're away from your keyboard. So whenever I ask for that, I do ask very kindly if you would just take a moment, reach over to BuzzNet, and give me some sort of an update on your status uh, to pull it away from not ready and let me know that you're still working. And I'll go ahead and pause the video for just a second while folks sort of catch up. Video. The subdivision settings are in the input node for polycylinder 1. So after you've created your cylinder, you should see these. This is where you can change the radius, the height of your cylinder, uh, as well as the subdivisions along the axis, along the height, and around the caps. Alright, I think that's pretty much everybody. So let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. Now, what I want to do, for starters, is shape the top of the plate a little bit. Because, you know, a dinner plate is uh, almost never just a flat surface. There's usually all kinds of fun stuff going on with it. So I want you to hold down your right mouse button and select Edges, or just Edge. And just pick it by going straight up on the marking menu set. Alternatively, you can switch over to Component Mode and choose Line Components, and that'll allow you to select Edges. So that's another way to go about it. And if you're feeling particularly dangerous, you can press the F10 key, which I'm not going to do because I think that's actually slave to Camtasia, and I haven't uh, undone that yet. So uh, I'll just go ahead and hold down the right mouse button and choose Edge. And I want you to double-click this circular edge near the center of the plate. Now, if you see a whole bunch of vertices and you see this yellowish coloration that's fading to black on your end, what I want you to do is tap the B key, and that's going to turn off soft selection. I really don't want soft selection uh, active right now. Uh, since you mentioned the poly and NURBS, what about the subdiv one? The subdiv one we're not actually going to bother with right now. I like subdivision surfaces. They're very cool. The only thing that is special about subdivision surfaces in terms of Maya is that they are hierarchical in that you can uh, take a certain patch a certain area and give it higher amounts of detail generally speaking I don't use them that much these days uh, simply because I can get the level of detail that I need by smoothing a polygon model without having to worry about subdivision surfaces and if I need something with more detail it just looks you know like you know, popping out at you or something then I can make use of bump or normal maps to get really anything that I need. So these days, I don't find myself really diving into the hierarchical subdivision surfaces anymore and they're a little bit outside of our scope. So, so today we're just going to focus on two uh, fairly basic ones. It's just uh, getting into subdivisions requires a, a whole other lecture, so I'm leaving that kind of outside of our scope. Any idea why my tumble isn't working?
And then right as I ask that, it's okay, Tumble is fixed now. Well, that's good. You know, I love it when a problem fixes itself. It means I get to take a little bit of time off right away. So once you have this edge selected, tap the R key, and that's going to bring up your scale tool, obviously. And I want you to scale this down uniformly toward the center of your plate. Don't go all the way in. It doesn't need to be a tiny little thing. I mean, just pull it in a, a little ways. Just give us some room to work and add some extra edges and whatnot. As soon as you've done that, we need to enter another tool. Now I want to point something out to you. Earlier I told you that that shift right mouse marking menu is context sensitive. So currently we are in, we're using edges. We're looking at edges. And so if we hold down shift and right mouse, we see things like the interactive split tool, extrude edge, bevel edge, uh, merge and collapse edges, slide edges, etc. and so forth. However, if we press F8, and in my case I had to tap it a couple of times actually, and I hit shift right mouse again, notice we get something else entirely. This is because right now we have an object selected, and so Maya says, oh, you want to do some sort of polygon operation on this entire object. Well, what would you like to do? And so you get an entirely new set of options. So that's actually what I want you to do. Make sure you're in object mode. Again, you should have a green wire frame, so you should be able to recognize that right away. If you uh, don't want to press F8 for some reason, you can click on the select by object type button up here in the uh, status line another way to do it or even another way to do it is just to hold down right mouse alone just right mouse and remember earlier how we selected edges notice up here at about what two o'clock you'll see object mode so that'll switch it back to object mode which is very cool now once we have that done once we're back in object mode hit shift right mouse again and suddenly you're going to have access to the insert edge loop tool which for you blender people is just like hitting control r and all I really want you to do is to add an edge about midway down these edges. I'm going to give you a warning, sort of a heads up. If you did not add a subdivision to your caps earlier, do you remember when I told you guys that that was really important and that people would overlook it? I'm going to explain to you why that was so important right now. If I try to add an edge loop here, notice everything works fine. And I'll tap undo to get rid of that. But if I click inside here where all these triangle pieces are, Maya gets confused. Maya inserts edge loops by looking at quads and the flow of edge rings radiating out from four-sided polygons. If we don't have four-sided polygons, if all we have are triangles, Maya doesn't really know which direction it should be cutting, and so it won't let you add it in an edge loop. So if you're not adding in an edge loop, it's probably, if I had to guess, because you didn't uh, add in that subdivision along the caps. If you do that first, you'll be fine. Okay, one more thing. I jumped back out to object mode by tapping F8, and you'll notice that this edge is still highlighted in red. This is a bug, as far as I know, that has been around in Maya for, I don't know, five or six years now. Uh, it's, it has nothing to do with selection. It's just there to uh, kind of annoy some of the more uh, OCD among us. So if you right-click and go back over to edges, and you just select and deselect in space... Then you can go back to object mode. What it is, is the, vi the graphical aspect of that selection sometimes remains. It's just a funny little issue, but it doesn't hurt anything. I just thought I'd point that out because it happened to show up on my screen. Okay, we have inserted another edge, and that's really good. Now, the next thing I want you to do is to switch back to edges. So again, that's holding down the right mouse button. Move straight up for edges. Double click the outermost edge at the top of your plate and then hold down shift and double click the one directly beneath it. So basically you're just getting these outermost edges. Grab your move tool and slide these up very slightly. You don't really need to go very far. You're just kind of adding that little bit of incline to the outer edge of the plate, which is how you keep your spaghetti sauce from rolling off the side. And what I want to do is give a really quick ready check while I uh, check to see if people can get that. All right, uh, Johan just said for some reason he's trying to create a new edge. It sounds like an extrusion to me. Uh, how do you do edge loop again? Real quick, that's just double-click an edge loop. If you're trying to insert one, you do that with the insert edge loop tool, uh, which we were accessing by going to object mode, tap F8 a couple times, and shift right mouse. You'll see it in the lower left-hand corner of the marking menu, insert edge loop. If you're just trying to select it, that's just double-clicking. Now, back over to you, Johan. For some reason, I am creating a new edge. Let's just take a look at your computer, and then we'll just see what's going on. Uh, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. 
Johan Opperman. Why do I not see you in the list of people? There we go. Well, that is kind of awkward. The attendee list is being kind of silly on my end, so I can't actually, I don't see you listed in here. But don't let that alarm you, because I only see about, about nine or ten people actually in here, so. Alright, well, I'll tell you what, if, um, I'll try to work with you the other way around. Johan, are you still in here? Throw something into the questionnaire if you're still in here. Okay, Joppy, all right. Um, I mean, does your result look something like this? I mean, generally I would call that bad. No, it doesn't, okay. Then, well, let's see. I don't know why I can't actually see you in here. There's got to be some sort of criteria of which I'm unaware. I'm going to play with my attendee list for just a moment and close down the question panel and stretch this way out. Oh, I see what it is. Never mind. Here you are. Ha ha! Clever. Okay, well, let's take a look and make you the presenter. Thought I was losing my mind for a minute. Alright, Johan, show me what you got. Show me what your problem is. This is actually BuzzNet. I need to be able to see Maya. Can you pull Maya over to the other screen? We're still staring at BuzzNet. Oh, here it comes. I see it trucking in from screen right. All right, make sure that one, you're, ooh, you're inserting a bunch of edges. Tap undo real quick. All right, uh, make sure you're in edge selection mode. So just hold down the right mouse button. Make sure you see edges, not shift right mouse. Put the shift key away and do it right on top of the object. Hold on. There you go. Go to Edge. I just, I just want to make sure that that's what's selected right now. And I want you to double click on one of those edges. You're still in a tool right now. Um, tap Z. Now, tap Q. Yep, you're in the, uh, the Insert Edge Loop tool still. Now you should be in the Select tool and everything should be just fine. Da -da. Now move. Get the Move tool. W. Move stuff. Move up. Do it quick. Ah, perfect. Uh, I would tap undo with that, and I would grab that, or, or yeah, you just bring that one up behind as well. However you want to do it, but you should be good to go now. You were just still in the Insert Edge Loop tool. That's really all there was to it. Okay, let me go ahead and bring myself back in as the presenter. Okay, so, excellent. We've got a little incline at the outside of our plate. Now we're going to do some things that are a little cooler. Uh, what I want to do is create that little kind of raised area and the little recessed, uh, recessed ring on the inside of the plate, you know, like where you would you know, put a bowl or something. A lot of china sets have that, or at least I think they do. So here's how I'm going to do that. I want to grab the Insert Edge Loop tool again. I can do that by pressing the Y key. Y is going to invoke the last used tool. In this case, that is the Insert Edge Loop tool, which you can see over in the toolbox on the left-hand side. And I'm going to insert an edge loop about halfway between these two guys, so somewhere right in there. The exact location isn't really all that important, as you may have caught on. Now, I want to select all of the faces inside of this new edge, and there's a few ways I can go about doing that. One of the easiest, however, will be to utilize the Paint Selection tool. So you can click on that over here in the toolbox. Make sure you use B and middle mouse to increase 
and decrease the size of your brush. Also, you can hold down the right mouse button to make sure you're selecting faces, and then just paint out each one of these faces. Now, before I go any further, because the last time I did this, this is where I could start uh, stranding some people, which I don't want to do. So I'll go ahead and just take just a moment, and I want you to let me know uh, as soon as you have this group of faces selected. So basically, you're going to insert an edge loop and grab all the faces inside of that, and I'll do a really quick ready check to see who's there. Now, Lawrence just said, when I add an edge loop, it flattens my plate. Does it really? That's interesting. Let's go have a look. Show me. Ooh, you're adding all kinds of nasty edges. Turn off soft selection for me. Tap the B key. And let me see if you're muted real quick. I don't even know if you even have a microphone, but either way, I think you're muted right now. Hello. 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 So, what's your issue? Yeah, um, I had the plate sort of looking all curved, and then when I had an edge loop, it just kind of made it all flat like this. Tap undo, show me. But for some reason, when I'm tapping undo, ah, we're upside down. That might have something to do with it. You, it looks like you built your plate upside down somehow. What the? No, that was the right way up a few seconds ago, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. We'll, we'll just go with that. That's fine. Well, why don't you grab those two outermost edge loops at the outside of the plate, and you just pull those up, and that should flip the plate around. Don't do what you're doing right now. Your camera's upside down. See how the Y-axis is pointing straight down in the lower left-hand corner of your viewport? Right, okay, okay. That yeah. means your scene's upside your down. selection's still on. Hit B. There you go. In fact, here's what I want you to do. Um, drag a marquee selection around the entire thing. And then click off in space. Okay, that'll get rid of those weird extra selections um. you had. Now, those weren't really selected. They were just drawing like they were selected, which is visually confusing for everybody, including me. So pull those up. There you go. I mean, that's kind of a shallow bowl, but, you know, it's working. <laughs> Getting there. I think you're okay right. now. The only thing I might recommend is taking that innermost edge loop that you've got right there, which is actually still kind of big, you know, that guy. I might scale that down yeah. uniformly uh, because you're not going to be able to insert an edge loop on the inside of that, as I demonstrated earlier. Yeah, there you go. So now if you insert an edge loop right about in the middle there, you can grab the faces just inside of that, and you're pretty much caught up. You cool? I got to get towards it, mate, I? There we go. Think. Well, you got this. You're like a pro. Hey. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, that's a bit Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hang on. No, that that is. Yeah, what yeah. Before. That's that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, that is odd. Okay. Well, um, Tapsy. <laughs> uh, it's not undoing either. <laughs> what have you done to Maya? My my um, my, my Maya is broken. Uh, if, you know, actually, it's entirely possible. Um, <laughs> tap undo again. Back up a couple more times. Keep tapping. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure why it would be doing that. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And Maya generally doesn't break very easy. I just find when you get a whole bunch of people using it, um, then strange That's things. gone really strange now. Yeah, uh, close and restart <laughs> Maya. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I think you'll be fine creating a really quick cylinder and slapping some edges into it. If you don't feel like you can catch up, just hang tight, because we're going to switch out and make a NURBS plate here in just a few minutes anyway. Cool, uh, cool. But yeah, it does look like Maya's just being kind of silly for you right now. Okay, let's give it another go. <laughs> All right, I'm going to jump back over to, uh, to presentation. All right, cheers. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, no problem. All right, and let's see here. Let me hit the, uh, the magic mute button. Beautiful. 
All right, uh, let's see. What else we got? Uh, how do you grab the faces? Well, the way I did it was I grabbed the paint selection tool, and uh, that just allows you to paint out selections. If you're not selecting faces, hold down the right mouse button and tell the paint selection tool what it is you want to select. So in this case, you do want to select faces, and you just paint those out. If you uh, select too many by accident, remember you can hold down control and erase your selection, which is very, very nifty. Ah, uh, dongo, dongo, dongo. That kind of answers Johan's other question as well, which is really cool. Um, let's see. Can I have points in the middle of my polygons, like in Blender? I saw. I think I saw that option somewhere. You did. It's actually in the uh, preferences somewhere, though they've moved it around a couple of times. Uh, so if I don't immediately jump on it, uh, let's see. If you go under preferences, polygons, uh, what is it? Faces, and turn on centers. I think it is. Maybe that's it. Hang on. Face. No, it's not showing. Uh, window, settings, preferences, preferences. I turned it off years ago, and then when it finally became a standard to leave it off, I kind of rejoiced. Yeah, I believe it's right there. Selection section. Oh, is it under selection? Uh, yep, select faces with center or whole face. That'll do it. So yeah, there's kind of like what Blender gives you. Now, me, personally, I don't like this anymore. Um, I used to, uh, but I don't really care for it anymore. So, like I said, I turned it off years ago, and then it became like a standard setting for it to be off. And, yeah, so there you go. All right, so uh, where we left off, let me see what other questions have rolled in in the meantime. Uh, where's the edge tool again? The edge tool is make sure you're in object mode, shift right mouse, and you'll see insert edge loop tool. That's the one we've been using up to this point. Uh, what else? I can't add another edge because it says click drag on edges. Um, well, one, if you're having a hard time like a hard time with that, uh, make sure that you get out of whatever tool you're in first. I mean, just uh, I, I sometimes do that. Like if I'm just having a rough time with a certain tool, I'll just tap Q to go back to the select tool and then start back over again. So it's, then it's shift right mouse, insert edge loop, and it will say click drag on edges. That's how the tool works. You tried, same problem. I can't add another edge because it says click drag on edges. See, that doesn't make any sense to me, so I have to look at your screen. Uh, it should be saying click drag on edges because that's actually how the tool works, and when you do click and drag on edges like it tells you to, it inserts an edge, which is novel. So uh, let me take a look at your screen and see what's actually going on. Find you in the list here. There we go. I had to find you. All right. Mr. Cheeky, show me what you got. Ah, click drag on edges is giving you a little bit of wonkiness, it seems. Usually what that tells me is that you've got something really weird going on with those edges. Can you try to add one along the outer edge of the plate for me? Oh, that's working. Uh, let me see here. Are you muted? Should I be? Able I feel like I should be able to hear you right now. Let me see if I can hear you. Paul, you there? Do you have a microphone? Yes, hi. Hi there. Uh, I don't know why, but only, only now it started working. Okay, it's possible you had some edges selected uh, when you did that. Maya does get a little... Yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, Maya, if you have edges selected, Maya will try to split just the selected edges, and that can make it a little bit fussy sometimes, which is why we've been trying to uh, evoke the tool while we're in object mode to try to alleviate that problem. Yes, I tried going to select tool and select outside, uh -huh. and it didn't quite work. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right, no problem. All right. So we're back. Uh, let me go ahead and just kind of pick back up where we left off. Uh, what I wanted you guys to have was just this inner edge loop and then to select the faces inside of it. I think I may have a couple of other questions I need to attend to just real fast. Uh, I'm experiencing Maya failure. going to restart, well, reinstall Maya. Okay, well, that's... 
one way to handle it. Uh, my edge loop's got all messed up. My edge loop doesn't go all the way around the plate. Help! Jacob, why'd you break your plate? I mean, you had a perfectly good plate, and now you've broken it. Why? I mean, if everything was working... Your name is Jacob Hazard? So it's more than just a clever name. All right, show me what you got. This is your email, just so you know what we're looking at. And you are now going to want to change the password you have to 3D Buzz because you've just broadcast it on a video, which I can't do anything about. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, control back, and you tell me when you're ready. How's that? So, yeah. Okay, well, once you have these faces selected, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab uh, these faces and just pull them up a little bit to create a little bit of a rise toward the center of the plate, and then we're going to use a new tool. I'm going to hold down Shift and right mouse and do an extrusion. Now, here's how the extrude tool works if you've never seen it before. You have a move tool, a rotate tool, and a scale tool all in one. All you need to do to access each part is just click on whatever it is you want to do. So if you want to move, click on one of the move arrows and you see what that does. If you want to scale, click on one of the scale cubes and suddenly you can scale or you can click, as soon as you click on one of the scale cubes, watch this, as soon as I click on one, you see this little tiny universal scale tool appear in the center, so you can scale in a little bit, which is very nice. If you click on this ring at the far outside, suddenly you'll get a rotate tool, and you can rotate an extrusion as well. I'm going to undo a couple of times all the way back. I'm going to do my extrusion one more time, and all I'm going to do is click on one of the scale cubes, then scale down uniformly, maybe just a little bit, like so, and I'll pull this down a little. Don't go too far because you'll probably end up going through the plate. So just a little bit. Something about like so. And you should be good to go. Okay, the last thing is I want you to hit G. And what G is going to do is repeat the last command, which is in this case an extrusion. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to scale down to about here, but then pull up slightly. And really, that's all there is to it. That's pretty much everything I want you to do for now. So I'm going to do a quick ready check for those who are following along with that. Ask questions if you need them. Jacob, where are you at, man? Do you still want me to look at your screen? I'll go ahead and pause the video for just a second. All right, we're having an extrusion problem over on uh, Maryland's machine, so let's go have a quick look over there. All right, whenever you're ready, Marilyn. And uh, Jacob, I did see that you started using the chat system over in GoToWebinar, which I never monitor. I monitor BuzzNet, and I, missed, I monitor the question system. So sorry I missed what you were saying. Oh, Marilyn, you're, you're actually using two separate computers, aren't you? Um, so yeah, you're, I'm probably not going to be able to see Maya at all, if I remember correctly. It's all coming back to me now. So here, let me switch back over. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, that... Yeah, you can't show your screen. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's it's hard for me to re remember um, everybody's individual problem. Okay, so um, that does hinder me. I just want to point that out. It does make it very difficult for me to uh, diagnose issues on your end. But I'll give it a try. Uh, really, extrusion is just a matter of making a selection of faces and then firing off the extrude command, which you can do in several different ways. The way I recommend you do it is by holding down Shift right mouse and choosing extrude face. Of course, that's going to give you the extrude manipulator. This allows you to move, to scale, or to rotate depending on which part of the tool you select. All 
Uh, let's see, I'm just kind of scrolling through. My sound broke up. Uh, that happens to some folks. Uh, how did you get that one circle I don't have again? Uh, very likely just by using... The only ways I've added circles are in two different manners. One, uh, I have used the insert edge loop tool to add edge loops. And then the only other thing that I've done is the occasional extrusion. So like right now I have this group of faces selected here in the center of the plate. I can extrude these. So let me just switch over to faces real quick. And these are actually not selected. Again, it's that selection bug. So we'll just deselect everything. And I'll just paint those out. So if I have these guys selected, I can do an extrusion, but then scale that extrusion down to do something like an inset. And as you can see, that makes an extra edge. But I'll undo that. Okay. So, just a quick ready check. Who's got this done with their plate? Okay. Marilyn, are you still with me? Well, if you're having a rough go of it, uh, do the best you can, because here in a minute we're going to be building a, uh, a NURBS plate anyway, so it'll be fine. You get to, you'll get another crack at it. Okay, the last couple of things we're going to do to this plate is we're going to do some bevels. So I'm going to switch over to edges, and I'm going to grab this edge loop, or I'm going to try to grab this edge loop. Whenever I don't see an edge loop selecting, I always get a little bit nervous, so let me see why this wouldn't be selecting. Oh, I have an extra hole in my geometry. Now this happens from time to time. Let me check a couple of things. Okay, keep faces together is on. I didn't hit any crazy hotkeys that I know of. So this is just me having hit something while I was trying to do a demo. But really, that's not that big of a deal if you know about it. So if you see this, you can see it looks like I've got some vertex that's just sticking up like so. It looks like I may have extruded edges without even meaning to. Uh, and there it is, poly extrude edge one. But I can see it right over here at the top of my list, so I should be able to just undo a few times until I see poly extrude edge one disappear off the top of my stack, and we should be good. So there it is, and there it goes. So, yeah, I had those selected without realizing it and hit extrude while I was talking. So once that goes away, I can now come back in here and select edges. Grab these two sets of edges, and I'm going to do a bevel. So shift, right mouse, and you'll see bevel edge right here on the side. As soon as that pops up, you'll see over in your input section, you can adjust the offset. Now I do this by clicking and choosing middle mouse. And there you go, it just kind of softens that up a little. You can also grab this outer edge out here that we added a while back and do the same thing. Just give that a little bit of a bevel as well. Now why are we doing this? Well, if you want to see, if we hit the 3 key to see what this looks like smoothed, that little bit of extra beveling adds a lot more detail to the ridges in the plate. Can you, uh, did, uh, can you delect? I think that's delete. Can you delete something from the middle of the stack specifically without having to undo all the way back? Not exactly. It depends on the function. Uh, if it's adding new geometry, then no, that'll be a little bit of a pain. You can try reordering it, but if you've done anything that is dependent on the number of vertices created in that previous operation, then you can cause all kinds of problems. Uh, generally, what I would do is, like if you have an extrusion of that sort, then I would uh, set the extrusion's distance to zero and then uh, do a merge vertex operation and just merge all the vertices that are right on top of one another, and that would solve the problem. You just run into that uh, vertex ID dependency issue that I demonstrated in the last class.
where things will start kind of moving around and don't end up where you think they should be. Okay, so generally speaking, this is a pretty good plate. I'm going to do a couple of last-minute things just for vanity that you do not necessarily have to follow along with on your own. Uh, if you just want to watch me do them, that's totally cool. So watch this. We're going to insert another edge loop here on the very outside of the plate, and I'll scale it out just a little bit. This is going to add a little bit more rounding to the plate. Maybe grab the outermost edge and thin it out a little bit. Plates do tend to get thinner toward the outside. I'm going to grab these faces here at the inside of the plate, like so, and do an extrusion. If you're curious, I'm just kind of catching us up. We're a little bit behind where I want to be. So I'll do an extrusion and just inset that a little bit. And then one more. Now, that, guys, I understand this is the un underside of the plate. We're never going to see this in our animation. That's why I'm not really focusing too hard on it. But, you know, a lot of plates have kind of a little domed up area in the center and then a ring that stabilizes. So we can just take the edges of this ring and do a quick bevel on them. Now I'm doing this really, really fast just to give you an idea of some of the things you can do at this stage. But that's it. We have a plate now. So really, if you made it this far on the top of the plate, you're good. You're just fine. Now, what I want to do is take a moment and look at creating this plate using NURBS surfaces. If you are not yet done with your polygon plate, I don't want you to be alarmed. You can come back and take a look at the videos and you can revisit how to do that. Uh, the NURBS plate, in a lot of ways, would be a lot of, uh, much easier way to handle this. So I'm expecting people who had a rough time with the polygon modeling tools uh, and creating the plate in that manner to think that NURBS are generally a lot easier. And I'll give you a tip. For a surface like this, for making something like a plate or a cup or a bowl, or any other form of pottery, especially. Uh, NURBS are going to be a very easy way to do it, but I still wanted you to see a few polygon modeling tools um, so that you can play with them later on on your own. Okay, so here's what we'll do. Come over here to one of the side views. I don't really care which one. It can be the front view or the side view. It's, either one's fine with me. And just zoom your view up so that your first plate is visible at the bottom of your screen. Then I want you to go to Create and grab the CV Curve tool. This allows you to drop down control vertices and define a NURBS curve. Now I mentioned earlier that NURBS stands for Non-Uniform Rational B-Splines and what that means, that's a big long technical term, just to say that this will be a surface defined by curves which are in turn defined by mathematical operations. So, once you are in the CV Curve tool, this gets really easy, but you have to be a little bit creative, okay? So watch this. Hold down the X key once again. Remember, that was for grid snapping. And that's going to, then just click, like right on the center grid. So that big, long, long black line, just click right in the middle of that. So that'll snap your first point right to the grid. Then release X. Next, hold down Shift and click and drag. This is going to add another point, but because you're holding down shift, it'll be directly across from the first point. This is important for a lot of reasons. The primary reason is called tangency. This will make sure that the center of your plate is nice and flat. If you don't hold down shift, you could end up with a little point or a little tiny uh, hole or like a, uh, a recession in the center of your plate. That'll be all sharp and pointy. So hold down shift on that second point to make sure that everything is nice and flat. Now, what we're going to do from this point on is draw half of a cross-section of our plate. Now, what does a half of a cross-section mean? Watch me draw one, and then you, uh, gauge, we're, using, we're creating a CV curve. We're creating a CV curve. Now, you tell me where we would go to create a CV curve, and I think you'll be good to go. All right, and... Um, all right, so watch me draw this once. Now, the way I'm drawing is not just by clicking. I tend not to just click when I'm using the CV Curve tool. I will often click and drag to help me place my points a little more carefully. So I'll put one there and put one here, kind of close together to create that sort of ridge. Then one up here, another one kind of close to it, and one here, and then here. Now let's do like a little lip on the outside of the plate. What do you say? So maybe here and then here, and then here, and then here, and then we'll go back up on the underside. So there's my lip. And we'll give it a little thickness on the underside. And we'll curve it down to the bottom. Hold down Shift. I'll make this nice and flat, just because I can. 
Now, the last two points are both very important. So make a note of this so you don't forget. At a point, right, but like so your second to last point, and your very last point, you want to hold down X and the Shift key together. That's going to do two things at the same time. It's going to snap your last point directly to the grid line, but it'll make sure that it's straight across from the original. Again, that'll keep everything nice and flat. When you're done, press Enter. We have just drawn half of a cross section of a plate. Don't worry about connecting them from top to bottom. This is exactly what you want. So I'm going to do a quick ready check, and I want people to follow along and create this in the video. If you can't see the curve points and you want to make edits after you've pressed enter or something, don't stress. You can just draw out all the points that you think you need, and then hold down the right mouse button and go to control vertices, just like you did with polygon vertices, and you can move these around to reshape what this curve actually looks like. So if you don't get it right the first time, that's no cause to stress. We can do all kinds of adjustment to this shape when we're done. Take care, Niels. Good to see you again. Okay. When you're done, I'm just going to press F8 to go back to object mode like we do. And it looks like well, most people are kind of getting there. Let me go ahead and pause the video, give folks just a moment to catch up. Okay, we're back, and you should have your curve done at this point. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure that we go over to the Surfaces menu set. That's with F4, or of course just choose Surfaces from the drop-down. When you're there, go into the Surfaces menu and choose Revolve. And you just made a plate. That's all there is to it. Now here's the really, really, really cool part. This is the part that I love the most about working with NURB surfaces. Oh, and if you see this little black spot, I'll show you how to clean that up in a minute. But here's what I want you to do, just for testing and for having fun. We can actually reshape this plate by use of construction history. So if you switch over, uh, take a look up here in your status line and make sure you switch off surface objects. So you can't select surfaces anymore. So you notice I can't actually select my plate, but I can still select NURB's curves. So select your NURBS curve and hold down the right mouse button and you can grab those control vertices again. Now watch this, if I grab these CVs and move them around, I can thereby reshape my plate. If I do it in the side view, then I get a clearer idea of exactly what I want this plate to look like. So I can be like, well, we could turn it into a bowl just by moving these CVs around and I instantly have a bowl. Or, if I wanted to go a little bit further, I could pull this up, I could, uh, I must think I'm in UDK again, uh, I could rotate them around about like so, maybe pull them up a little higher, and I've got a jug, pull them up even higher, and I have a vase. So it's, it's like Pottery Class 101, and you can just have all kinds of fun with that, and turn it into all kinds of things. Now I'm going to tap Undo a few times, and get back to a plate. And let's talk about this little black spot. The reason you have this black spot is because there are a lot of vertices all stacked right on top of one another to produce this shape. If you grab the point at the center of your curve, and just slide it carefully back down the length of the curve, just by a tiny little notch, that point will disappear. And then just come down to this one, grab this point, slide it back just a little bit, point disappears. So you'll probably all agree with me that creating a plate using NURB surfaces is quite a bit easier than making one using polygons. Now that, of course, doesn't mean to say that uh, NURBs are better than polygons. It's really just a question of what's the right tool for the job. Uh, is there an option to add CVs after I've finished drawing the curve? There is. It's called Insert Not. So if you select your curve, uh, you can, uh, probably one of the easiest ways to go about this would be to select a curve point. So select your curve, right mouse and choose curve points. Pick some point along the curve where you want a little more detail to be added. And then under your surfaces menu set, you should see edit curves and the insert knot tool will add a new CV in that area. It won't go exactly where you put that curve point, but it will be in that region. Uh, because the CV calculation is a little bit different than that. But it will add more points so you have some more detail. And you see I've now got a little bit of a crease going on uh, right there because I've added that little bit of extra detail.
Now, when you're done, when you're happy with your plate, the last thing you can do is just delete out your curve. And that's going to be the same thing as deleting history on your NURB surface. So that now you've got a nice plate. Now here's what we're going to do. We're about an hour in right now. So I'm going to go ahead and declare kind of a break. We're going to pause the video. During this time, I want those of you who haven't yet caught up, if you haven't created some sort of a plate, to go ahead and do that on the break. Most of you should be pretty much done. Uh, a NURBS plate is going to be really easy, but I did want to make sure you did get exposed to a few of the polygon modeling tools as well. Otherwise, we just wouldn't get to touch any of them. So uh, that will end this video, and in about 10 minutes, we will reconvene.